Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're out here at the carving yard. Got the wood barrel burning. Got everything set up. Getting ready to work on another tutorial. Now the last one was that little bear. This one's going to be the owl. And the next one is going to be the mini moose, specifically for my members. Now, this video and the last video are going to be available to everyone, but you know what? The members contribute to the channel directly every month, helping me keep it going. And I really do appreciate it. And it's been a while since I've given something back. And so, like I said, that little mini moose tutorial is going to be for you guys that are members. Every tier is going to have access. I appreciate you guys. And I'm going to do better this year going into 2024, showing my members that appreciation. And we're also going to try to get more tutorials out for everybody. So we'll see how the year goes. Anyway, today we are going to be working on just a simple owl. We're going to be using the Steel MS-170, which I have put a quarter pitch sprocket, 14 inch bar with a quarter pitch, 43 gauge chain. If you're beginning to carve, and you're not sure what all that means. Use the Google machine, spend some time, read some forums, um, ask questions, ask questions here under the videos. I try to get back and answer you guys and I've got plenty of subscribers that can answer a lot of these questions really well. So we've also going to be using this MS-193. Now you could just use your 170 and swap your bars back and forth. Once you put a quarter pitch sprocket on, you can run that 14 inch bar and chain and then you get yourself a dime tip bar. I'm running a 12 inch steel dime tip bar, run whatever you want. Um, this is 43 gauge chain though. So these are the two saws we're going to be using. We're going to be doing most of the heavy lifting or most of the work with the MS-170 regular bar. And then we'll clean it up and do a little bit of detail with this guy. Now I've got no power out here today, no power tools, no sanders. I don't even have the flap sander. We do have the torch, so we'll burn it after, which usually it doesn't look that great. But really, I'm just trying to give you guys a baseline to get started. And then when you accumulate other tools, you have other tools. You can add cute little eyes. You can sand it better, color it, do whatever you want to do. But this is going to give you a baseline on some projects that you can, you know, sell for like 30 to 40 bucks. Okay. Um, the last bear we did was like a 30 to $40 bear. This is going to be a 30 to $40 owl. And then that moose, I actually usually sell those guys for right around 40 to 50, depending on size. So today we're again, working with a quartered log, new carvers. If you're carving out of a full round log, you're going to have at least one huge crack and a bunch of little ones. It's almost guaranteed it's wood it's going to crack you can't get around wood cracking unless you soak it in chemicals and all that junk i don't do that quarter your log all right this is one pie shape out of four okay what's going to happen here is this is going to have little to no cracking as it dries that's just the way it goes no guarantees as you can see about the size of my hand not very big right four inches maybe five or six inches and then this overall piece is about 10 to 11 inches tall nothing crazy so whew, enough talking uh we're on two camera angles be sure to give me a thumbs up hit subscribe if you guys haven't already we are over 20,000 subscribers and uh we're gonna give away that brand new steel ms 170 really really soon i appreciate you guys getting me here it's all because you guys uh thank you so much let's uh let's start making some sawdust all right guys remember safety toed shoes particularly boots, chaps, gloves, ear protection, and eye protection, safety's in your hands. So read your chainsaw owner's manual and it'll tell you about safety gear and how to properly use your saw. So kind of just discussing and pointing out there how we're gonna go. Remember we're carving an owl, so it's a straight cut down. We're gonna come across and we're gonna come down to the back where the tail feathers will be. Pop that off. That's going to be roughly the chest area of the bird. This will be where the wing is that you're going to see. This will kind of be like a three-sided piece for the most part. Um, I think we do a little bit of work on the back side, but not a lot. Now, if you haven't done the upgrades to your jaw horse, I highly recommend it. I'll try to remember to link that video here, but if I don't, um, I think it's just like jaw horse upgrade, and it is in the beginner tutorials playlist. You guys will be able to go there and find it if it doesn't pop up like right now. That's adding some blocks to your metal jaw horse so you don't hit it with your saw and dull your chain. So um, just a really good upgrade to do if you're using a jaw horse. 
So now we've done, so in this case, this owl is gonna be kind of looking at us as we carve, that's the goal, so his head is turned. So we just did the side of the head, down the neck, back, and down the tail feathers, all right? That area sticks out too far, so we're gonna angle away from the top of the head. <coughs> come down in just a little bit that'll kind of be where the beak area is angle up that's going to be more of the wing on like the right side of the bird so now we cut down cut down that'll be lower chest area down to the log there around it around to the back so we're already getting some simple shapes now you guys will be able to at the end to take this piece much further if you have a die grinder and tools and things like that we are mostly just working on chainsaw work here that is the plan and if this video helps you out guys be sure to you know give it a thumbs up uh and leave me a comment if you haven't already hit subscribe hit that bell hit all turn on youtube notifications about 13 percent of you turn on the youtube notifications hit the bell hit all and turn on youtube YouTube notifications. So we're over 20,000 people and about 13% of you have done that. Um, the average on YouTube is 10 to 30% of people turn on all notifications for YouTube channels. If you don't turn those things on, you are potentially missing uploads, updates, and all kinds of things like that. So plus it also helps my channel out. And I do appreciate it. I know I'm talking through some of this cut process, but that is the best part about a double angle tutorial. You guys can kind of see the angles, and see what's going on, right? If you guys have questions on the carve, please ask. Please ask if we need to have a more in-depth video on different parts, let me know. I'm thinking of doing a video with a little more in-depth on some more detailed feathers. We did a three-part owl carving tutorial um, near the end of last year with a bigger piece to give more insight on feathers uh, so be sure to check that out if we need to do something else let me know now those lines i just cut in those are going to be what i call the bottom side of the tufts or the eyebrows right when you're looking at an owl and he's got those horns and they come down into the eyebrow area we just cut those lines in using the nose of the bar we're just sort of cutting in below those lines but not going all the way through um, i know i've had a comment Somebody kind of wanted, uh, you know, size of the wood and all that and to mark out quadrants for carving and things. Um, that's just not how I, I carve. I don't, you know, mark everything down. I just kind of go with the flow and see what happens. And that's just my style. It's something I could practice though and try to do as far as tutorials to make them a little bit better if that's what's needed. But I don't know if it'll make it better or worse because I just don't carve that way. Now we are carving pine, and I gave uh, the rough dimensions in the beginning of the video. So right now, what I'm doing is just looking at this piece and I'm thinking, okay, how can I sort of separate the head, neck, body, winged area? We're making little cuts here. We're just sort of saying, okay, this is where the beak's gonna fall. Let's come in underneath, remove some material, the scraping motion little line little line right so now we've sort of defined where the head is sitting it's not his head isn't like up super high he's not gonna have like a ton of neck now we're gonna go ahead and cut a line in just a little bit for this wing we're trying to keep things rounded as we go I have some rough marks here from blocking the piece out so I'm using the nose of the bar to just scrape back and forth so it is important, guys, to be conscious and thinking about kickback, right? Because it can really happen at any time, but it mostly happens if you use the top side of the nose or straight on with the nose of the bar. Um, happens a lot when the saw idles down, but you're still in the wood cutting. You know, your idle speed slows. You've let off the trigger. It wants to run up the wood rather than cut through the wood. Um, it is also really important to have a sharp chain on your bar a sharp chain is less dangerous than a dull chain a dull chain can skip and hop and have more kickback a sharp chain usually cuts in much better rather than skipping and hopping and jumping around if you're carving hardwood you can expect more kickback and more issues like that 
Um, if you're carving softwood, you know, pines, even poplar carves nice, but can still give you some kicking around and things. Um, I know people ask me about spruce. I'll carve it if that's what I have, and I have to. I don't care for it. It has a lot of sap pockets, but as a beginner carver, if that's where you're at, carve what you can get, all right? Carving softwoods, you don't have to sharpen your chain as much. Carving hardwoods, you're gonna have to sharpen that chain a lot more often. So here we're just cutting off some angles in the back to round off the back of that head. If you've noticed, a lot of our cuts make a wedge or a triangular shape. That's how you kind of start to get the rounded edges on things. As you're cutting, think triangular and wedge shapes as you cut and remove pieces. Um, a lot of cuts with the saw are using the saw a side, not necessarily the very nose head on. That leaves a lot of straight lines. So if you can use like one side of the bar or at angles, right? The saw is at an angle for just about every cut. It can help to alleviate those straight cut, overcut lines that you then have to figure out, okay, well, how am I gonna, you know, sand this in or shape this in so that doesn't look like a, you know, a straight line on an animal. Even there, the saw is at a little bit of an angle down. We're sort of cutting up. A little bit of a shadow effect once the piece is complete. Cutting in around the ear here. Ear, horn, tough, whatever. Pieces like this, when you're looking at it head on, like on the right hand side, look at the sides and the head and all that. Make everything round backwards or away from you. If anything behind the front point of the piece of art is taller, that's what the eye is going to go to. So if the carving is rounded back behind the main focal point, <coughs> it looks more defined. It's going to look a little. It's going to look better. Don't have any high spots, you know, like behind the head or in that neck area. We just cleaned up and rounded backwards. Like don't have that sticking out really far unless you're turning it into feathers or something, you know, fluffy or whatever. All right, guys, switching out saws for the detail dime tip bar just gonna think now about rounding pieces detailing making light somewhat shallow cuts shaping saw control we're rounding the nose here using the bar kind of scraping motion um, you know in my early carving I would get things blocked and then just use power tools to do all my detail work which which can be great because you can get a lot of you know, definition and things like that, a lot of details in, but it can be very time consuming and frustrating when you don't make the money back on that piece because power tools took so long to shape and shape and shape and then finally detail. So the more practice you can get with your saw, the more control, right? Like right there, we get a little bit of jump because we're using even the nose on the carving bar. Um, the more muscles you build in your hands, your forearms, bicep, you know, your shoulders, all that kind of stuff really is going to be a big deal because you'll be able to run this saw longer. You'll have more control for the detailed stuff. You'll be able to get that much closer, if not get a final product with just your chainsaw. Um, you know, there are plenty of and have been plenty of carvers that just carve with chainsaws and nothing else um, and they get a lot of definition and they have a lot of beautiful pieces I do like to put power tools in to clean up places like these eyes also those eyes are something for you guys to play around with right get in you do a couple lines see how it looks clean it up or you could take the bar like we did in the last bear and just kind of make it concaved and sort of shave it out with the nose a little and just paint some eyes in there you're done. So now we're coming into the feathers. Look to the left. See the saw down high angle with the bar. Kind of like an up cut, right? This is not a straight cut. We're using the right side of the nose here. We're just cutting in those short, tight feathers. Um, play around with these patterns, right? 
uh, like I've said before, guys, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm not, you know, trying to teach you guys to create an exact replica. I'm trying to give you guys the idea, the process, so that you can create art that, you know, you're having fun with and, you know, make something you love to make and hopefully make you a couple extra bucks. So here we're kind of connecting the feathers around the wing. It just gives it a little bit more detail there. Now, I just want to let you guys know, I'm hoping to have this video out Thursday, Friday, this particular video. Um, Saturday, we have a review video coming out, and then Sunday, we're going to have another video using the product I'm reviewing on Saturday, a new chainsaw, and uh, in Sunday's video, we are going to discuss how to enter the giveaway for the Steel MS-170, okay, so... You guys are going to want to be sure to hit subscribe, hit that bell, hit all, turn YouTube notifications on because you don't want to miss that upload, all right? So here we're going to kind of do a cross-cutting diamond pattern. Quick, it's simple, and easy. That's it. A few lines going one way, a few lines coming back. We did our up and down tail feathers, calling it done. It's just a little guy. If we were going to use power tools, we could really detail those feathers and make them pop. Now, as far as the front goes, it's sort of a similar... Uh, pattern when you're done, but not like you have a diamond look but The idea is I want the edges of these to look rounded overlapping and kind of fluffy So like his chest is sort of puffed out If you notice on the left, you can kind of tell on the right the bar Nose is high the saw is very low. So we're undercutting these feathers removing that material very slightly This is all stuff that takes practice. This isn't always a one and done Thing, you know get a few of these blocks ready to go and just spend time practicing you know carve up a bunch each probably after every three four five pieces you'll get more detail more definition also every single piece you do put your initials in it somewhere preferably the bottom or the back and uh good to go all right guys so there you have it just a quick owl you know what i'm not even going to hit it with the torch because i feel like when i hit it with the torch you can't see the detail here in the tutorial as well now it's up to you guys you can hit it with the torch brush it down add paint clean it up if you have uh die grinder saber tooth burrs flap sander all that kind of stuff if you're not sure how to do that i have other videos in the beginners tutorial playlist that can walk you through you know adding different detail but here we go again you know just another 35 30 to 40 dollar carving um something simple something quick something easy once you get it down and all you need is your chainsaw i mean if you have an ms-170 with a quarter pitch um with a quarter pitch sprocket you can use that 14 inch quarter pitch bar and a 12 inch quarter pitch dime tip bar two different chains on there obviously and bam knock out a bunch of these and it makes it worth it if you're only doing one or two a day and you're trying to sell them it's not worth doing that you know it's not worth making one a day it's worth making you know sitting here making half a dozen to a dozen of these and then bring them out then bring out your power tools and clean them up and burn them get them all ready to go you know then you feel like at least you've made a few hundred dollars worth of product hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video leave me a comment let me know what you guys think you know maybe we'll do some bigger ones i thought we'd start off with smalls i think it is important though for saw control and i think it's important to work on your smalls to you know build muscle especially if you are new to carving and you're just starting out you know or maybe you don't know yet the muscle fatigue that you're going to feel in your forearms and your grip your shoulders your chest everything you get done at the end of a full day of carving when you first begin and your whole body is gonna hurt you're gonna feel like you went to the gym i always hear the old i always i always hear this uh stuff from my i always hear this stuff from my friends like you should really go to the gym and work out and i'm like do you forget what I do a lot? Like I am outside in all kinds of weather, uh, running chainsaws, moving logs, and I'm working out. <laughs> That's how I keep this girlish figure, you know? But uh, that's it for this video. Again, guys, be sure to give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and for my members, keep an eye out for the mini uh, moose carving tutorial that's gonna be specifically for my members. I really do appreciate all of you. And just really, really want to show my appreciation for my members who help support the channel directly every month, whether it's buying me a coffee or in the different tutorial tiers. You guys rock. So thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for helping me get over 20,000 subscribers at the end of last year. You guys are just awesome. It's just amazing. 
And uh, check out some other videos popping up. Leave me a comment. I'll see you guys later. Bye.